Hello and welcome to United Church of Christ, Fort Lauderdale, where you are loved and you are welcome. We invite you to come in and join us for worship. It's just about to begin. United Church of Christ, Fort Lauderdale. I am Reverend Joel Slotnick, and I am humbled to serve as the chair of the board and leadership team here at United Church of Christ, Fort Lauderdale. Wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Here at United Church of Christ, Fort Lauderdale, our mission is to develop passionate followers of Christ through the celebration of worship the excitement of God's word, the blessing of God's healing, the rewards of service, the honoring of God's creation and the joy of fellowship, where all are welcome at God's table. We are a welcoming, open, and affirming church to all people of all races, genders, ages, sexual orientations, professions, previous religious affiliations, nationalities, or mental and physical conditions. The call to worship. Today we worship with our hands as well as our hearts and voices. With our bodies we celebrate God's word given to us in literal words. And God's word to us made flesh in Christ Jesus and known to us in our experience of life in creation. Come to one of the tables to enjoy the feeling of the earth and connect with God's creation. Our table is set with soil, seeds, water, and containers to plant the seeds. I invite you to come to the table to plant a seed. God visits the earth and waters it greatly enriching the earth. God waters the earth and softening it with showers and blessing the earth. Along with the hills, the meadows and the valleys, let us shout and sing together with joy. Let us pray. Loving God, you created life in us and all around us. Open us to receive your gifts of your world and your word, that we may not just be hearers of the word, but doers also. Amen. For our first reading, 
Isaiah 55, 10 through 13. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy, and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. chapter 13 verses 1 through 9 and 18 through 23. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables saying listen. 
a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on the rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. That is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet such a person has no root but endures only for a while, and when trouble or persecution arises on the account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but cares of the world, and the lure of wealth choke the word, and yet it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case hundredfold, in another sixty, and yet in another thirty. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Eugene White for the song In the Garden. I come to the garden alone. God walks with me and talks with me. Today may seem a little bit unusual and may make some people uncomfortable because the pastor is not in the pulpit and uh, bringing the message from the pulpit. But what I've learned is the Word of God is everywhere. And God, to me, personally, doesn't care what I wear. It's what I feel, who I am, what I believe, how I serve others. There's a long list. I could go on and on. Today's theme is growing in grace and knowledge. So I think about going to the garden alone. And this is my garden. This is my office here at the church. And in this place, I can come to be alone. I can come to be quiet. I sit among so many treasures all around me from years of ministry, from all the books and the learning and, and just experiences uh, in my, not only in this room, but in my life. So I love this quiet space. I love this sacred space, and I invite you into it today. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. We hear about how to grow in grace and grow in knowledge. Today's sermon title is Tending the Garden. We thank Jean for reminding us about the garden in her song. I love today's call to worship especially. Today we worship with our hands as well as with our hearts and our voices. We worship with our bodies. We celebrate God's Word. God's Word given to us. God's Word to us made flesh in and through Jesus Christ and known to us in our experience of life in creation. God's Word literally, we are told, gracefully given to us as a gift. 
in the passages both reading today the we hear about the word of God the word of God and when we think about that many of us think about the Holy Bible the Bible we grew up with that we might have seen on our grandmother's coffee table and when the pastor came over she made sure she dusted it or we took it off a shelf and put it on the coffee table and dusted it that kind of Holy Bible I've had so many wonderful experiences with the Holy Bible not in the way that you might really think there's no limit to what the Bible can do and how it can influence our lives at the age of 18 in October 15 1974 I was given this Bible the King James Version on the picture is Jesus and children sitting all around him and it was given to me by a girlfriend her name was Joanne Warren presented to Pat Rogers October 15 1974 and when I opened that for today's sermon I came came upon a I guess you would call a prayer card that had been in that Bible ever since I've had it and on the front of the card it says the power of prayer the power of prayer and on the back it says pray a prayer of dedication oh God put a new and right spirit within me open my lips and my mouth shall show forth thy praise from Psalm 51 verses 10 and 15 when you have confessed your sins and received forgiveness you should then dedicate yourself anew to God as a result you will then become a stronger witness for God and there's a prayer guide me Heavenly Father as I endeavor to witness for thee and to serve thee after the example of thy, thy son in God's name Amen. Truly amazing to go through my collection of Bibles through my lifetime that I keep and treasure for this sermon about the Word of God. Then about after that, I guess about 15 years later, maybe 20, don't do the math, I met my first pastorate in Topeka, Kansas, serving as an interim pastor bringing the Word of God and ministering to this flock there. Well, we had a lot of children there, and I love the children. They were like my very own, and now they're grown, <laughs> have their own families. It's amazing to see them mature and come into their own. But there was one little girl that I really felt close to, and, you know, she was just so excited about the Word of God and hearing the Bible stories and the children's sermons and all of those things from the person Cindy Taylor who headed our children's ministry and one day she brings a gift to the church she comes up to me after church and she says Pat, Pat the Patrick I have a gift for you and she had two books and when she handed me one it, it's called God's Little Princess Devotional Bible. God's Little Princess Devotional Bible. And it has a little tiara with a jewel in the front. And it's wonderful. It's written so children can understand God's message. So she hands one Bible to me. And the other one she keeps. And she says, now what we're going to do is... I'm going to autograph your Bible and you're going to autograph mine. So she writes in the bottom her name, Nicole. Thank you, Nicole, for that precious gift. It's just truly, truly amazing. The next Bible is this Holy Bible. You can see it has a camouflage front. Very unusual. But the date was September 6th, the year 2013. I was on a flight, airplane, to a destination to teach a church about stewardship. I love talking about stewardship. 
And next to me was a person, a young man that's part of the United States Air Force. And as we're on the trip, you know, we start talking and he says, what do you do? So I'm a pastor and I'm headed on a trip to teach about stewardship. He reached in his knapsack and from underneath his seat and pulled out that and he had showed me this Bible, his holy Bible. And as we exchanged stories back and forth, before the plane landed, he said, Pastor, I want you to have this copy. He says, we're issued to, they're issued to us by the Air Force, and I want you to have this one. United States Air Force from Todd, September 6, 2013. I was on my way to teach about stewardship and he taught me about stewardship. Holy Bible. And I'm sure you've all had experiences like that also. It's not about the paper and it's not about the ink. It's about the message. So often we we forget that. We get caught up in so many things, other things, when we need to concentrate on the message itself, the very Word of God. When we think of God's Word, we think of the Holy Bible. From the first reading today, we hear from the prophet Isaiah. And in Isaiah's own words, he shares, for as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I was sent. We have received the word of God. We have sowed, we have shared. Have we shared and have we sowed the Word of God? Do we continue to sow that seed with others with whom we meet? Isaiah says, For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. Joy and peace. What a concept in these trying times, in these challenging times that we live. Where do we find joy and peace? Do we live in that joy that's promised to us and we found and received? Even in the, in the midst of the chaos that it feels like going on all around us. Can we still remain live and thrive in God's joy? I feel like I know what that means. Nothing can take away God's joy that lives within me. Things try and there's not a fictitious you know, evil spirit trying to drive joy and peace away from me. It's what the earth and what we create around us, what humanity does, what we do to one another, but it continues to drive that joy from me and I refuse to let it because I believe in God's Word. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. That's in this reading from today from Isaiah. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the, shield, of the field shall clap their hands. And it's unbelievable that this weekend, as we recorded some music, uh, Greg Lamberg, who's part of our music ministry and a member of the church, shared with uh, me a song when he came to record another song today, which is called Word of God Speak. So we'll share that song with you now. You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy and all the trees of the field will clap, will clap their hands. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands, the trees of the field will clap their hands, the trees
Please and the deal will clap their hands when you go out with joy. You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy and all the trees of the field will clap, will clap their hands. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands while you go out with joy. Thank you, Greg. Thank you for that message. Isaiah's words, the the prophet Isaiah's words put to music, may they inspire us. And in the communion liturgy today, during the prayer, we also hear your gifts to us, our lives, this world, and your word to us. When we receive your word, may we nurture it so that it grows roots within us. When we receive this word, when, when we receive your mighty word, may it grow and may it nurture within us, God. That's the invitation. The Word, again, it's not paper and ink. It's a living, thriving, breathing way of living that brings joy and peace and justice and freedom and divine spirit and more to this world and within us. If we only invite it in. All these remedies we have to the world of ills in the midst of the challenges in which we live. This is not a book. Oh boy, will I ever get emails now? It's not a book, it's a way of life. It's filled with thousands of years of history, experiences with God that we're called to learn from so that we may grow in our connection with the divine. It's to instruct us, it's to guide us how to become closer and closer with God and do God's work on this planet, in this world. And to, it's done through our experiences of reading that scripture, of our experiences with God, it's nurturing our own spirit and it's experiences with others. Just look at these books behind me. The, the hundreds of books of different experiences with God for us to learn from, for us to grow in spirit from. God continues to bless us abundantly and tremendously. And what amazes me is we're not all called to experience God the same. We're not all called to experience God the same. God wants an individual spiritual relationship with each one of us. It's just like with our friends that we have. Each relationship is different. Each person is a friend, but each relationship is unique in its own way. And that's God's experience with us when we allow it. But we must worship the message of this book and not allow the book to become an idol itself. When we worship that book as an idol, I think we need to reconsider because it's like a golden calf. May we stop limiting our relationship with God. Amen to that. May we stop limiting our relationship with God and allow God to break through the walls that we allow to limit our relationship with God and His relationship with us. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Creator, you have called us to grow in grace, to increase our understanding of Jesus, and to develop a close and intimate relationship with you. Lord, this is what we desire to do, and we pray we may come to know you more and more each day. Thank you, Holy One, for the Bible, which is written to help us understand your word of truth. And thank you for the Holy Spirit 
who has promised to guide us in the way that we should go. We pray that we may walk with you in spirit and truth, so that we each may mature in our Christian faith and learn to live godly in Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name, I pray. We pray for those undergoing challenges and difficult times. We call their names out loud now. We now sing the prayer taught to us by your son, Jesus. a difference in the world and I believe that giving makes a difference in my own life. Sharing what God has entrusted me with gives me a feeling of joy and gratitude. I invite you, my brothers and sisters, to give now as an act of faith in the one who shows us immeasurable love and generosity. Let us gather our gifts together and bring them to God as an offering of gratitude and praise.
let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for all the blessings that continue to flow here through this church, your church. We thank you for providing the love that fills this house. We thank you for the hearts of the people who continue to send financial contributions. We thank you for the hearts of people who continue to provide service. We can thank you for the people who continue to provide prayer and support in so many ways who give of their time and talents and treasures. We ask you to bless these gifts, all these gifts that have been received here this week through this place. May they flow through this place into the community whom we serve. We ask you to bless them. And may they be used in your name and your honor and always for your glory, Holy One. In this we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. gather together every Sunday to share a meal. So remember it's this table and what it stands for that connects us. So whether you're here in this sanctuary or you're at home or you're on the beach with the tablet, we're all connected through the love of God. Let us be in prayer. Creator God, you made us to be neighbors, members of one family, blessed with great diversity. You created us to be helpers and friends to one another, entrusting to us your justice and your joy. Yet we have denied justice and joy to many, creating worlds of poverty, pain, lost opportunities, prejudice, and absence of hope. In so many ways, we break each other's hearts. We hurt and kill one another. Still, you do not reject us. We ask your forgiveness and pray to be transformed. On the night that Jesus was to be betrayed, he sat at the table with the disciples and with friends and family. And they shared a meal like this one. But that night, he took the bread and he blessed it. He gave thanks for it, but then he broke it. And he showed it to all of them gathered there. And he said, this is my body to be broken for you. Those words ring true to us today. And he said to eat and remember him. In the same way, he took the cup, blessed it said, this is the cup of the new covenant. Whenever you drink of it, remember me. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the grape and the grain. They come from the earth, your creation. We ask your blessing upon both so that they become for us today, at this moment, the very essence and presence of your son, Jesus. We ask your blessings upon this meal. It's in his name we pray. Amen. The table of our Lord is now set. It provides forgiveness, strength, wisdom, compassion, and grace. All is now ready, and all are invited to experience Jesus. So we invite you to take a breath, feel the presence of the Holy Spirit flow through us. So we ask you now to take a cracker, a piece of bread, and just juice, and, and consume along with us.
Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks from all of our hearts for this meal that you've shared with us today. Help us to remember what it stands for. It stands for love and the ability for all of us to see through all the, the fog and the prejudice and all the things that divide us and helps to remind us of the sacrifice that your son gave for us and for all humanity. Help us to remember that. We thank you and may this meal renew us and refresh us in both body and spirit. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Thank you for joining in for today's worship service. And as we end this service, always remember that out in this world as disciples of Christ, our hands are God's hands and our feet are God's feet and our words are God's words. Go in peace to serve and love the Lord. Amen. Thank you.